Hello Zwift Racing fans and welcome to another video report from the Zwift Racing League. This season we will be following along the Herd of Marmots from the Herd Racing League taking on the EMEA East A1 division. This is the top end of um, not the elites but the next level to it in Zwift Racing. So let's follow along and see how it goes. This week's course is Climber's Gambit. Um, for those of you who haven't done it, it has three points segments. This was a points race. So the first one is a sprint. It takes place right around here after we go through the S's. The next segment, so that's pretty chill after that, is here at Titan's Grove. Um, it's a 900 meter climb at 6.6%. Takes the fast guys apparently in this race about a minute 15 seconds. Most of the rest of us humans, it's something closer to 90 seconds to two minutes. And then the last segment is this guy here. This is the Epic KOM. Um, here's a quick video of them getting that ready for us. Yeah, Epic is the worst, and it's the worst in a Climber's Gamma race when you're, like, the slowest guy. So, uh, anyway, we uh, would normally fast forward here to the sprint segment, but unfortunately I'm out of practice, and I forgot to hit record until we were this far along in the race almost. So, we will not be getting that, but for those of you who have watched these reports before, we'll know that we don't let a little thing like... Um, Brent for hitting the record button stopping us so in time-tested fashion here comes the marmot dramatic reenactment of the sprint segment look at those marmots go their chalky little legs taking them along it's about 10 seconds for this sprint and at the end of the bridge close enough and that amazing marmot sprint brought to you by Luke Elton, who went on and smashed the FTS segment and got top points fastest through. And he also managed to get fourth across the line. So a hell of a sprint from Luke. And I managed to sneak in in ninth place and pick up a couple points for our team here on the sprint. So pretty good sprint segment for the marmots here. So we will pick things up in uh, the forest close to the top of Titan's Grove. We're just about to come up to the um, the dip before the segment starts. I'm in the group. You can see if you're looking at the right hand side that Lee and Chris Coetzee has not made the group. I think they got dropped on the steep bit going up to the reverse KOM. You can see that I am having the joy of doing 500 watts just to hold the group here. Uh, I thought by heart I got to 169, but I, watching this video back, it only gets to 166, so I could have gone like six more beats higher before I probably would have fallen off my bike. Oh, 167. Um, which was not what I was hoping to do. I was hoping to be cruising along, getting to the front of this group, and just, um, I was pretty sure I wasn't going to win any time races against an A1 group on a 6.6% slope, so I was just hoping to get to the front and and then be able to like catch the back of not the front group, maybe the second group coming through. Um, so I'm just gonna go and recover here. Uh, and Kevin and Steve and Luke are all right in front of me. And here goes the start of the segment. Um, I think probably Luke and Steve might have liked to take a crack at this, I think. Kev would probably agree with me that he would have been happy to hold the front group through this segment here. Um, really, we're not going to get to see much of the front of this segment <laughs> from me, I'm afraid, because I do try to go here. Um, not to win, but to survive. And very, very quickly obvious this is going to be way too fast for my pace so I, the best i've ever done on this segment is something like a 489 watts for 
the minute and 40 some odd seconds, or maybe I've had like a 120 something at the best in a group. Um, and you can see the, I'm doing like high 400s and pretty much getting shelled straight out the back. And there it's 168, and I see them going away. And I decided that I needed to not fall off my bike in my basement. Uh, but I've done some research, and I think I have determined what it is the challenges that our marmots were experiencing through this segment because also I think even Kev for sure ends up in a second group and maybe even both Steve and Luke. It's not quite clear how far off the front they got by the time they crested here, but here's the research I pulled up. They thrive in foothills, valleys, and meadows, and can be found in areas with long, cold winters, with no available food for most of the year. Marmots can't live in dense forests because they don't provide the variety of herbs, grasses, and fresh growth plants they need to survive. So, you see, it's, it's not our fault that we didn't destroy Titan's Grove, it's that it's just the wrong climate for a marmot. We need to have a place that's like cold in the winter so we can hibernate and regain our strength. Um, fortunately, that is not Titan's Grove. It is a forest with a lack of the selection of herbs and shrubs that we need to eat to survive as marmots. So, alas, Titan's Grove was very hard. And um, yeah, we didn't get very many points here. I won't even bother bringing up scores. And that will bring us to the final segment of the day, the Epic OM. It starts here, just across the bridge by the seaplane. And yeah, well, you can see it goes up 6.3 kilometers at 6 point some odd percent. Um, took me 24 minutes today, or on this race, to do it. You'll see that over the segment coming down from the top of Titans Grove that Chris Coetzee and Lee Putnam have certainly made up a bunch of space on me. And as soon as we get to the switch bag here, you see Chris go past me. Chris has a very, very good Titans Grove here. There he is. Hi, Chris. And um, he ends up coming in in front of me, well in front of me in this race. And he will finish picking up uh, six points, which as you'll see, were well needed. Um, Climber's Gambit kind of sucked for me during this race, but we did have some riders who did a very good job, so we will use the, once again, time honored tradition of the dramatic reenactment to check in on them on Climber's Gambit. Here's Luke Elton smashing it away up at the, closer to the front of the race. You can see the weather conditions are much worse up where he was. Here is Steve Vink. You can see he found some crowd support out there. Um with some people who were cheering him on, running beside him. Amazing that uh, people would do that when he was riding on his trainer. And here is Kev Fowler, who was steady through, smashed it right up at the top of the climb. Well done by Kev Fowler. Look, he's going to stand up here, really give it some gas to try and keep with the group. Well done, Kev, in his race. And that brings me back to my finish here as I slowly oh so slowly um, crest onto the flats and roll in towards the arch here um, it was well towards the back but I scored 7 points so I guess that's something and we'll look at the final results here we'll switch over to Lee's feed as I picked up his finish as well so here are the results for the Marmots. You can see that we came in eighth overall in A1. That's a heck of a good result. One point short of the BL13 Brewers, which um, maybe hopefully we can snag some points off them and move up a few places over the upcoming races. You can see we were led by Luke Elton, who you know got a great total of 43 total points. Then Steve Inc. picked up 14. Kev Fowler with 11. Chris Coetzee at six, I got five at the finish, plus my two sprints, points were seven, and Lee Putnam with three, which kept us in front of the Beast Mode PB Rose guys in ninth. So all good, well done to our entire team. And that will do it for Climber's Gambit week one of A1's at RL. Next week is New York, so hopefully we'll have another strong result. 
Thanks to everyone who's watching and enjoy your races, everybody.